You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 230. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. I'm your host, Christina Cantors. I'm a coach, a speaker, and the founder of The C Method, where I'm all about helping high-performing professionals and business leaders to build powerful communication skills. You can learn more at thecmethod.com. Now, a few weeks ago on the podcast, I announced I would be more active on Instagram. I openly shared about how I haven't really had much of a clue around Instagram, but I'm learning, learning the ropes. And I sent out an email to my community. And I've got to say, I had an overwhelming number of you write back and to share with me how you use Instagram, who you follow, the, the types of posts that you like to see and so on. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone who wrote back. I am eternally grateful and thank you for helping to educate me. And since then, it has got me thinking, how much of myself should I be sharing on Instagram? And this is a question, I mean, not just Instagram, I mean, on social media. Um, There's many different platforms, of course, there's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and I'm on all of them. And it's been an ongoing question or, you know, debate in my mind around um, how much do I share? What do I share? How much is too much? And what is necessary for me to achieve my objectives of, of growing my brand and my business? And I was finally inspired to do this podcast on this topic um, from an email that I received from podcast listener Lucy, whose Instagram is at the salty hound. Now I'm going to read out what the email said, what Lucy wrote. She writes, hi, Christina, thanks for your emails and podcasts. I hope you'd consider covering my slightly unusual conundrum in a future podcast. My dog has a moderately large following, 69,000 followers at the moment. I'd say, side note, that's more than moderate. That's pretty excellent. Um, And a lot of the posts are about our regular life, snuggles on Sundays, drinking at bars, watching trash TV. I like to keep my dog's Instagram life separate from my personal life. I'm an economist at an organization with a lot of media exposure. But I know a lot of my friends, colleagues, and acquaintances follow Salty, her dog. This means people in my professional life see me in my pajamas on a regular basis. It's hard to know where the line is too unprofessional. But it also gives me great opportunities for speaking. We've been on morning TV and had some big internet videos. I suspect other people on Instagram with it. I suspect other people on Instagram with it as a bit of a side gig also struggle with this tension. So I hope you cover this a bit in an upcoming podcast. Thanks, Lucy. So firstly, thank you, Lucy, for sharing that with me. And I am certain that other people are sharing this uh, this challenge of yours. Um, so here's me addressing it on the podcast. Now, some of you might be thinking, hang on, wait, isn't this podcast about like communication and speaking? The reason why I'm talking about this is because whether you like it or not, social media plays a key role in our communication. Um, If you're a business owner like me, or if you're running a side gig like Lucy, it's somewhat mandatory to have a social media presence, you know, to build that following in that community. Um, It's an extension of your brand, right? If you heard the podcast uh, from last week with Suzanne Chadwick, we talked all about personal branding and she was the one who who also inspired me to get more active on Instagram. You know, the, the way that you present online and through social media is all going to tie into how people see you and view you and want to interact with you. Um, So social media, the way I see it, it's a way of, it's still communication. You're communicating who you are and what you stand for. And it's it's just in the online setting, right? So if you're an employed professional, I mean, perhaps this is something your company has encouraged you to do. Maybe they've said, hey, go on and create a LinkedIn account. Um, And, you know, being on LinkedIn, for example, is even more important if you're job hunting or looking for new opportunities. And tell me that you, tell me honestly, if you've never, ever Googled someone before you've met them, right? I think we can all relate to that. We are all curious, you know, before I meet with someone, I usually Google them and see what they're all about. So 
the way that we communicate online is absolutely critical to our overall um, brand. Okay, so today I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts around using social media and how much you should share. I'm going to answer Lucy's question um, and I'll give you, and first I want to share with you um, how I use social media at the moment. So firstly, Facebook is the platform I've been on the longest um, and that's where I'm connected with people I actually know, right? So I've decided that that's going to be my personal, like proper personal profile. And I get friend requests all the time from people I don't know. And quite frankly, I ignore them. Um, maybe some of you listening, maybe you've connect, uh, tried to friend me on Facebook and I've ignored you. I'm sorry for that. Um, but honestly, I don't know who, if I've not met you in person, I'm not going to connect with you because that's what I've decided for my Facebook. For LinkedIn, it's all about business, right? So it's business posts and I will connect with anyone unless you are clearly a salesperson trying to pitch me in your initial post. I'm not going to connect with you. But apart from that, I will connect with anyone. So if you listen to this, come on over and connect with me on LinkedIn. Twitter, I only use when I'm at conferences or events because I can search for the hashtag of the conference and I can see conversations that are happening in real time. Um, so that's the main way that I, I use Twitter. Um, I also have my assistant post my podcast automatically. Well, it's not automatic because he does it, um, but I get him to post every single week. Um, but that's the extent of my Twitter use. And then Instagram, I only use. I used to only use it for travel, but as you know, I'm now starting to use it more for business and building up my brand and connecting with um, you, dear listener, and um, using it as a blend of personal and business. All right, so. If you're in this conundrum of how much do I share on social media, um, I've got some. I've got three. I've got three steps for you. Three. Let's get into it. The first one is to decide what is your intention for your social media use. So think about why are you on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. You may have different objectives and intentions for each platform, and that's okay. Right? As you heard, I'm on Facebook for, my, for personal reasons to connect with, with people I actually know. Um, for LinkedIn, it's there. I'm purely there to build my brand and to grow my business and c to connect with people um, who, who might want to work with me or who I might want to collaborate with. So I've got very clear intentions for what um, I want to achieve for each of the platforms. So have a think about that, okay? Because then that, that's going to then help you decide what are you going to share. Now, step two is to set clear boundaries for yourself. Now, when you've done step one and you've decided, you know, why are you on this platform in the first place? What do you want to achieve? You can then create some boundaries around it. And when I say boundaries, I mean boundaries around what you post, how often you post and who you connect with. Okay, so this is your choice. You get to choose right? What your boundaries are. Just because some people choose to share certain types of posts or they post certain times of the day or certain amounts of time during the day, you don't have to do what they're doing, all right? You can do whatever the heck that you want because this is your life. It's your account. You get to choose. If you don't want a thousand or 5,000 friends on Facebook, that's fine. You know, I used to do a friend purge every so often and I used to have a th um, I used to have like a 300 friend max rule and a one friend in one friend out rule. So once I hit 300 friends, if I friended someone, I had to unfriend someone else because that was, they, they were my boundaries. Now that was before I started my business. Since starting my business, it's become a lot harder to do that because I'm meeting so many more people. Um, so I'm now at a thousand and six friends and I haven't done a purge for a while, but I, I, I would like to do that. Actually, it's been a good reminder. If you, for example, are deciding that you want to use Instagram purely for sharing personal photos about your life and you want it to just be for friends and family, then that's fine. Make it a private account and keep it that way. So, you know, get clear on what are these boundaries that you have for yourself? Who, who will you friend and who will you not? So one of my boundaries for Facebook was I do not, well, at the moment it is still, I will not friend you if we haven't met in person. And there's only a few exceptions to that rule, right? Um, 
But generally, if we haven't met in person, I'm not going to friend you on Facebook. Now, the third step I want to share with you is to know the difference between transparency and authenticity. And I'll explain what I mean. Um, So I was researching this, you know, because I was interested to learn, like, what are other people's definitions of this? What are their thoughts? And um, according to social media guru Pam Moore, she says, transparency is how much you share and authenticity is the truth of your words and actions. So I'm big on authenticity, okay? You can be 100% authentic all the time when you're posting, but you can have varying levels of transparency and you can pick your level of transparency based on the platform. Okay. So for example, um, when we talk about being authentic, this may require you to be vulnerable, right? So you might feel a little uncomfortable about what it is that you're posting, but not too uncomfortable, right? There's a, there's a line there. Um, cause sometimes being authentic and being vulnerable and sharing some of the struggles that you're going through can be some of the most, um, impactful posts that you share. Okay. Um, so maybe you are getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and, and that's okay. So it might be, for example, you know, sharing a personal story when you're not used to sharing personal stories. If you're used to talking just business, 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 or I'm at this event or I'm speaking here you know, maybe share a personal story about uh, like maybe a conversation that you had where you learned something, Um, you know, that could be showing some authenticity and being vulnerable. Or maybe you do a video of yourself not wearing any makeup, you know, if you're used to wearing makeup or looking a certain way, Um, or, you know, or just sharing something different that you're not used to sharing. Um, And so, so, so being vulnerable and being authentic is totally fine but you can choose how transparent you want to be based on that platform. So for example, um, on LinkedIn, I, I feel comfortable. Um, I might, I might feel comfortable sharing a, um, a struggle that I'm going through that is related to my productivity or my business. So for example, I did a a post a few months ago around how I was really struggling with winter and being productive and staying happy and healthy and motivated during winter. And I asked people in the video, is this something you're going through? Um, You know, what do you do to overcome this if this is something you're going through? And for me, that wasn't something I would normally share because normally I'm talking about podcasting or communication and leadership. So that was something a little different and it was a bit out of my comfort zone to do it. But what it wasn't was a rant about how much I hate winter and I'm feeling really terrible and I wish I could just leave my business and go lie on a beach in Thailand. Okay, it, it wasn't it wasn't just an offloading rant. Okay, there's a difference between being vulnerable and authentic and just offloading your emotional rant onto your, um, onto the platform. So that's, so even, you know, even if I was feeling terrible and wanted to go lie on a beach in Thailand, I'm choosing not to be that transparent, right? Um, I'll give you another example. Um, another podcast listener, Chantal, um, her Instagram is at Tilly and True. She um, wrote into me to share her Instagram with me, and she also admitted that you know she's taken a bit of a step back from posting on Instagram because it was taking over a little bit. Um, but she she has a coaching business around self love and body image. And side note, she also has a full time job um, like Lucy. Now, Chantel posts images of herself. I've had a look at her profile. She posts very vulnerable images of herself. Um, Some of them are her in a swimsuit, right? And she's showing and and the posts that she's sharing are, hey, I love my body. Um, I'm promoting, you know, um, a healthy body image and self-love. So for her, it's, it's, it, for her, it's appropriate to share that level of transparency on her social media right? Now for me, I would never post a picture of myself in a swimsuit um, on Instagram because that just doesn't, that level of transparency is totally not um, comfortable for me. And I don't feel that that adds to my brand at all. That's not what I want to be known for, right? 
Um, so for me, that level of transparency is um, that's not what I'm going to do. So, you know, it's okay to pick what your level of transparency is. For some people, sharing cer- sharing a certain level of transparency um, is okay. You know, there are some online entrepreneurs who share their monthly income to the cent online with everyone. And that's, some- that's something that is aligned with their brand and they want to do that. For like 99% of us are not going to share um, what our income is, uh, you know, every single month because that level of transparency may be not appropriate and also definitely do not feel comfortable with doing that. Um, so coming back to Lucy's question, right, if your brand, the Salty Hound, is you and Salty hanging out at home on the couch in your pajamas and that is your authentic self and that is your brand and that is what your followers love about you – and you're comfortable with showing that level of vulnerability, then by all means, go for it. Okay. I say go for it. Um, Because in your message, you said, this is, this is what people love about you, that it's just you and Salty hanging out on the couch. Um, So, so do that. Um, You know, if that aligns with your brand, then that's totally fine. Now, if I was coaching you, Lucy, on this challenge, I would ask, and, 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 have a listen to this question if you are going through a similar conundrum. Lucy, has sharing posts of you in your pajamas on the couch been detrimental to your professional career? And have you received feedback um, from people in your workplace uh, around this? Has it prevented opportunities for you or has it hurt your professional brand? Has it hurt your career? And I ask this because, you know, we, you know, I'm big on mindset, right? And I know all of us carry these limiting beliefs around with us. We think, oh, I'm afraid of doing that because this might happen. And oftentimes these are stories that we make up in our head. Now, you may not have anything to worry about at all, Lucy. It could be a story that you're telling yourself, that it comes across as unprofessional, So if you're not sure, I recommend asking your colleagues or your boss or whoever it is at work that you respect and say, hey, I would love to hear your honest opinion. You know, sharing, sharing these posts, you know, does this hurt my professional brand? Do you think any less of me? You know, what impression does this give of me in the workplace? You know, something that, um, I did at the start of 2017 was I made the decision to stop editing my solo episodes. In other words, I'm doing them all in a single take. Now, my limiting belief around that was what if I make a mistake and I um and I stumble and I have an awkward pause? Are my listeners going to think, oh, Christina's not a good communicator? She's, um, you know, she she's not this professional person that we thought she was, we're not going to follow her anymore. That was my fear that I would not come across as professional, especially as a communication skills specialist. Um, but I gave it a go and I had listeners write back to me to say, Christina, I can't even notice the difference between you editing yourself and not editing yourself. And other people have said, Christina, I find it, your podcast even more um, impactful because you are showing that you are human and that you are making mistakes, right? So to, so for me, that was a limiting belief. So Lucy, my challenge to you is to, well, is to challenge that belief that you have around it and to find out for sure if it really is true. Now, if you do find out that it is hurting your professional brand, okay, let's say that um, people come back and say, Lucy, we really don't like that. It doesn't look good for you. It doesn't represent our company well. You know, if that's the feedback that comes back, then you need to think about, okay, am I going to change what I post on Instagram and still be authentic, but maybe less transparent, right? So control that transparency. So, like I said before, you can still be authentic and not share everything, right? So maybe that's a decision you make. And, or the alternative is thinking, well, if you really, really want to share your the, that level of transparency on Instagram with Salty and that aligns with your values and you feel strongly that you must share that type of content, then maybe the workplace that you're in 
isn't the best fit for you. Just saying. But ultimately, it is up to you, right? You're in control. This is something that you can do. You can choose to change whatever it is that you do, whatever you share. So this is this is up to you, Lucy. Okay. Now I do have some final thoughts of some things you should never do on social media. Coming right up after this quick break. Hi, Rockstar. Just want to take a quick break to say a huge thank you to everyone who completed the Standout Get Noticed podcast listener survey. Now, I am running that survey for the next week. So for those of you who haven't filled out the survey and want to have a say in the direction of the Standout Get Noticed podcast, then go to thecmethod.com slash survey. Um, You will find that link in the description of this podcast in your app. Now, I run this podcast based on what, you know, I think you guys want to hear. And I also, I get a lot of feedback from you, but I created this survey because I want to really dive in into all of the things that I could be doing better and knowing what works so I can continue to do that for you. Um, So far, I will be open and transparent with you. I've had 21 people fill out that survey and I'm eternally grateful for you. And I would love to get to 50 I would love at least 50 responses to give me a good cross section of listeners. So if you want to have your say in the future of the Stand Out Get Noticed podcast, go to thecmethod.com slash survey. It will take you five minutes, five, maybe seven minutes max. It's not super long and um, your answers will be everlasting. (laughs) Alternatively, if you don't want to fill out the survey, I'm jumping on phone calls with um, listeners, just five to 10 minutes, uh, phone calls to hear feedback um, from you personally. So if that's something you want to do instead of the survey, email me cc at thecmethod.com and we will set up a time to have a call. Thank you so much and I can't wait to speak with you. All right, let's get back to the show. All righty, welcome back. Now you've heard my three steps on how to decide what to share or what not to share on social media. Now, here are some final thoughts on some things you should never do on social media. The first thing is never spill your guts in a long emotional rant. We do not need to see that. And especially about your job, right? You don't know who's going to see this, right? So we don't need to hear that, that just, a, just a long rant about something. This leads into the second thing you should never do, which is never post when you're in a negative state. So never post on social media if you're feeling angry, upset, or frustrated, and you're in the height of that emotion, okay? Because then you will, your chances are you're going to post something that you're going to regret later. So post it. Uh, so calm down first. Think about what you really want to share. How can you do this in an authentic way that's going to add value and not just dump on people and then make your post? You may find that you don't even want to post at all after that, okay? Because once it's published, it's published. It's out there. You can't take it back. I don't care what people say. You you can delete a post, but things are always out there um, on the internet, right? It, they're, they're out there. You know, I was talking about boundaries before, about how you deciding on clear boundaries. You also need to respect other people's boundaries. So people are on social media to be updated on news. They want to be entertained. They want to see something funny. They want to keep up to date with what's going on with you. But they don't need, they shouldn't have to deal with your emotions and your um, your angers and your frustrations, right? That's not for them to deal with. That's for you to deal with. That's not their problem. That's your problem. So deal with it first. And then when you when you think, okay, I can still add value here and share my experience in an authentic way, then do that. Never post anything that you wouldn't want to be seen in the public realm. So assume, so never assume that your posts are 100% private. Assume, worst case scenario, that anyone can see these posts. Your mother your grandmother, your boss, your future employer, your clients, your potential clients, assume they can all see it. Even if you post something just to your friends, say on Facebook, posts can be copied, they can be pasted, they can be screenshotted. So I highly recommend not posting any pictures of yourself getting loose, being drunk, 
or getting nude unless that's part of your brand, all right? Assume that anyone can see those posts. Something also you should never do is to have your location setting on all the time and posting with your location. This is more of a security thing because potential stalkers can see where you are. I was watching a TV show and I I saw uh, there was a story of a couple who were robbed um, because they posted a bunch of selfies of themselves in their own home and posted photo photos of like the stuff in their home. So you could see what TV they had. They were posting pictures of the jewelry that they owned. And then they would post when they, you know, leaving the house now or they like they had location settings turned on. So these they were in, on the show, they were interviewing the, the, the burglars and the burglars were saying, yeah, I just go on to Facebook and look, I can see that they're posting here. I can see that they're out of the house and I can see exactly where they're living because they had location services turned on. He goes, it's super easy. Now that's pretty scary. I don't want to, this isn't a post about, you know, online security because it's a whole other topic. But that's just one thing to keep in mind. Something else you should never do on social media is post just for the likes and attention and also obsessively checking your phone for likes and comments. If you notice yourself, again, back to the transparency, if you're posting a lot and like all throughout your day and you're just constantly doing it and then obsessively checking back to see how many people have liked it, I just want you to be aware of that and and think to yourself, okay, why am I posting so much? Why am I doing this? Because if you're just doing it for the likes and the attention, then there's something that's maybe not quite right for you in, in terms of how you're feeling about yourself. So I want I encourage you to take a step back and go, you know, is there something that I'm needing right right now that I'm not getting from from maybe the people around me or my relationships? Again, whole other topic, just something I want to want you to keep in mind. Something else to not do on social media is to assume that what you see is a direct reflection of people's lives because it is not. Now, I personally have a rule for myself that I do not mindlessly scroll. If I'm going to scroll through my feed, I'm going to do it intentionally and make time to do it because I've noticed when I just, the more I scroll and look at other people's posts, the more I think to myself, oh man, everyone else's lives look so amazing and they're doing so much and they're so happy and all this brilliant stuff's happening. What am I doing with my life? And I start, and, and I start to get that niggly voice in my head telling me, you know, Christina, you're not doing enough. Um, you know, you haven't achieved enough, you know, look what everyone else is doing. And it's, 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 awful because it gives you this false sense of other people's success. Now, of course, this is a result of people not being fully transparent, you know, for good reason, as reasons I've stated, you know, earlier in this podcast. Um, I'm not, you know, for example, I'm not going to post, uh, I'm not going to post a picture of myself, you know, curled up on the couch feeling, you know, super tired on a Wednesday night and not wanting to go to work tomorrow, right? Because that's, I don't want you to see that. That's not the, that's not part of my brand. So, but what, so what you're seeing are generally just posts of, you know, the fun things I'm doing. Like, that's what I want to post. Here's something fun I'm doing. Here's something cool that I'm doing. Here's some exciting news. So that's all you're seeing. So I want you to just be aware that what you are seeing on social media is a curated version of people's lives. It's what they want you to see. Okay. So those are some things that you should never do on social media. Um, and maybe some of the things you, maybe that you're not doing them already. Maybe you are doing some things and you know, you're having to think about them now. Um, but look, I think it's really important that, you know, social media is everywhere and so many of us are on it or we are encouraged to be on it or post more. It comes down to do what is comfortable for you. Be authentic, right? Um, pick your level of transparency and just be intentional with why you're doing it and, you know, what are your reasons behind doing it and, um, and, and, what, and does it align with this brand that you're putting out there and, you know, what you're trying to create. So that wraps this week's episode. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, if you do want to connect with me on social media, join the conversation and tell me, you know, what are, what are your thoughts? 
What are the boundaries that you set for yourself? You know, what is something that perhaps you're struggling with? On Instagram and Twitter, I'm at CJ Canters. On Facebook and LinkedIn, I'm Christina Canters. Um, Just post and tag me there. Well, Christina Canters, The C Method is my Facebook page. Um, I look forward to connecting with you. And finally, if you do want to have your say in the um, direction of the Stand Out Get Noticed podcast, then I encourage you to fill out the survey. I want to get to 50 respondents. It's not a lot considering that there's over 50 or 60,000 downloads of this episode every single month. So if you want to have your say, jump on in, fill out the survey at thecmethod.com slash survey. The link to that is also in the description of this podcast in your app. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I will talk to you next week. I'm Christina Canters and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. <laughs>